Hi guys, this is another one of my garden videos uh, from here in Thailand. Um, it's about making a bromeliad tree. Now, you think, well, a bromeliad tree, what's a bromeliad tree? You get any old branch, any old stick, any old bit of root or limbs of trees or something, as long as they're hardwood, they must be durable, very durable, and you can make a fantastic, absolutely fantastic creation all by yourself, dead simple with bromeliads. Um, this video is sort of to show you roughly how to do it, but really it's just a guide um, because the limit is your imagination, how, how far you can go with creating something. You can get a, a piece of wood and make it absolutely fantastic and it looks dreadful. Or you can get a, a, something that's just nothing and you can make it absolutely fantastic. So it's, in, it's up to you, it's in your head. You're the creator and I'm just giving you a little guide, a little push on how I do things. Um, you can use this in your garden, at the front of your carport, if you get enough bit of sunshine in the afternoon or in the, in the early mornings, or you can in your conservatory or glass house, greenhouse, whatever you call it, in your neck of the woods. And, and, and you, it can be fantastic. And it needn't be limited to bromeliads, you can put all sorts of uh, epiphytic plants on it. Anyway, without more ado, here we go. I hope you enjoy this video and please watch it to the end. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Hi there folks, uh, today I'm going to do a short video for you on how to make a bromeliad tree. Um, it shouldn't take too long, it's very simple, very easy. What is a bromeliad tree? Well, I'm going to show you now. This here is an example, of my very first one in actual fact, of what I've done. I'll give you a good idea and I'll, I'm so pleased it's turned out well. And I made this particular one about four years ago. And, it's in and this is my favourite, my first bromeliad tree I made. And here's the bottom of the bromeliad tree I've just shown you in the last clip. And around the bottom here I've got mainly Neorigelias and actually on the tree is a mixture of Neorigelias, Acmeas, Tillandsias, etc. Now when you select your piece of wood for your tree, make sure you get a decent hardwood. It must be good. Uh, I'll, show, I'll show you why now. Here's one I made oh, a, a couple of years ago and it, it's beautiful. Actually here it's all lovely hollow inside lovely shape and all that sort of thing but it's softwood i found out and there it is there it was in there like that and i put the hose on it the other day to uh, give everything a freshen up and a pressure hose just forced it over so i need to make another one with better wood than this very, but very similar to this because it's going to be in a restricted place um, and I shan't be using this method. Uh, here I've used an old pot and filled it with lean mix, dry mix concrete and um, that's fine. You know, that, that's to me that's the best way of doing it. But uh, anyway, what we're going to do is replace the wood here and move these bromeliads across to the new tree. <laughs> I've got my mate. <laughs> here I've got a couple of buckets of limestone. Um, which I'm going to use to support the, the wood once it's inserted in this pot. Now, <laughs> oh coffee. Now, um, if you're going to use um, bromeliads which are slightly ericaceous, you'll have to change your stone, use granite or something like that, or sandstone. Now here we've got a cheap plastic pot. Um, I prefer to use terracotta or stoneware, you know, one that's cracked or damaged in some way so that you're not wasting it or throwing it away. But I don't have one, so we're going to use this. And this will be fine because where it's going to be, it's not going to be sort of on fantastic show. You're not going to, it's not going to hit you, it's not going to be a showpiece. Um, and here we have <coughs> diced coconut husk. Nice and crumbly, that's, that's excellent stuff that is. And here we have um, shredded coconut fibre, a lot softer. Now, you have to bear in mind, once the, the, both of these products, once after a year, or less than a year, they do tend to get waterlogged, so you may have to change it, 
or change the plants that, uh, that you're putting into this compost. And there we have the piece de resistance, which is a piece of wood. Uh, it's about two years old, I had it drying out in the lean-to. Now it's, it doesn't, it's nothing much, but like I say, I want something straight because it's got, got to go in a very confined space. But once that's planted, in a year's time, that'll look absolutely great. So what we do with that is we put that in there like that. Dead simple. Get it fairly central, upright. Fill in with stone round here. Fill up the gaps with a bit of coconut here, a bit of coconut fibre. And that really is it. And then plant it. But, but, we'll do it in situ because it's too bloody heavy to carry. I'm getting too old to lump stuff around now. So, here we are. That's our materials. with that. Now then, that's not exactly rock solid, ah, excuse the, the pun or whatever. Now then I'm going to wrap around or trickle in some of this um, coconut, chopped coconut, which I've left soaking overnight. Now you can plant in that no problem at all. You can stick your bromeliad there, a couple of stones to wedge it in, like that, and believe me, the things are growing. Now look, that doesn't look too good, that looks a little bit wobbly. Don't worry. That won't be a problem. So, that is it, that is dead simple. Now what, what you could do, if you're not happy with that, you could put a lean mixed concrete in, say a, uh, for, I don't know, uh, 931 or no sorry 631 something like that uh, dry mix dryish dryers whatever you want to call it in your neck of the woods and that really is it um, and round here around the front here I might just put a few I don't know a few bits of stone or I've got some old brick I might even put another couple of little pots there with some um, cryptanthus in just to disguise that that's it, dead simple. Okay. Oh, these are the plants I've taken off the old piece of wood. Uh, most of the acmeas. And a couple of Neori jellias. And there's the old piece of wood, look. Lovely shape, I love the, love the shape of it, but just rotten, unfortunately. So we're going to attach these Familiads to the tree, to the new tree, with um, slices of coconut husk and nails. Works wonders. Yes, yeah, this, this is what I um, use to fix the uh, bromeliads to wood with any wood, not just the bromeliad trees. Works fine. A couple of nails and coconut husk. Um, it's usually best to soak them for half an hour or so if it's a new coconut like this you know that, that works great and don't worry about this you think oh god that looks awful Ugh. but the thing is you punch the nails right in flush with the outside of the husk and then after a couple of days of watering you get surface rust on the nails and bob's your old carbuncle you can't you can't notice them and after a year or so the nails start to rust properly well they do here in Thailand anyway <laughs> <laughs> Everything seems to rust and fall apart here. Uh, sorry about that. And um, the, the husks will uh, degrade as well after about a year or 18 months. But by then your plants will have uh, grown attaching roots to the wood. So these will drop off, no problem at all. Okay. Well, here's our finished tree. Um, the light's not very good at the moment, so you can't see it properly, unfortunately. So what I'll do uh, tomorrow when the sun's on it, I'll just do a quick whiz round it with, a, with the video, okay? Anyway. Well, as I mentioned yesterday, um, here's the bromeliad tree we did, which is uh, now in pretty well full sunlight. 
You can see some of the colours of the plants there. I shall add a few more, not too much, but just to vary the colour a little bit more, I think. I've got a nice yellow one I might put there. That'll be good. That's it. Just remember, once you've planted your bromeliads, make sure the cups or the vases are full of water. Clean water, make sure you flush them out at least once a week to remove any debris. And that's it. That is it. Ugh, had to put the hat back on. The old uh, light's catching the dome. <laughs> <laughs> bit of reflection off the head. <laughs> Never mind, eh? Um, I don't know if I've pointed this out uh, early on in the video, but I'll just repeat it. Um, I live here in Thailand where we have a very distinctive dry and wet season. Um, uh, the winter is very dry, northeast monsoon, and the summer is very wet, southwest monsoon. Um, so that's easy, and I position my uh, muniad trees, some are in full sun, but not all day. Um, they, they do get relief either in the mornings or the evenings, and some are in semi-shade. Now what you must remember, with a lot of bromeliads, they need bright light, not necessarily full sun, uh, to get the colours to come out. So it's up to you, you've got to judge, you know, where, where you want to put your bromeliad tree. And like I say, you, 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 you can, you use your imagination, imagination, you can make some fantastic um, designs with it all. I mean, I've got one with just a branch uh, trunk, uh, swung, swung between two poles in the, in the shade house. And that looks fine, they look great, you know. And the thing is, you can add um, ferns if you like, um, you know, epiphytic ferns, epiphytic cacti. Um, so, you know, if you don't want, if you find all bromeliads boring, then you can mix things all up, you know. You might be able to get some mosses or lichens, that sort of thing. So you can really make it fantastic. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this video. And thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks very much. Bye. Happy gardening. Well, here we are. This is a bromeliad branch. Uh, again, limbs of a tree that was cut down in the garden and I strung it between two supports on the sh one of the shade houses here. Um, yeah, it's worked out very well. It looks very good and it's so easy to make. This is it from the inside of the shade house. Looking up, you can see, I mean, it's good. There's all sorts on there. Um, not just bromeliads, you can attach anything there, a few orchids, the odd ferns, you know, anything that's epiphytic. Absolutely great. This is a very small bromeliad tree I made out of an old bit of root that I'd lying around the garden. Just popped in a pot and uh, a few stones and bits and pieces shoved around the bottom. That's it. Oh, here so it is from the other side. There. Yeah. Simple, easy and very pleasing. Right guys, well as I said at the beginning of the, this video, uh, you know, the limit is your imagination. You, you, it's whatever you've got in here, you can make something fantastic. You can make something fantastic out of a little bit of wood like that. It, it really is up to you. Now, if, if it's possible, if you can get hold of in your neck of the woods, like for example, uh, a, a, a tree root uh, with a bit of trunk on it, you know, obviously it would take a mechanical digger to um, rip it out and get it to your abode or whatever, or you may have one in the garden. But if it's upturned and the bottom is, is cut flush or cut level, you don't need to put it in a pot or anything, it'll freestanding and you can get, the roots are fantastic, they're fantastic shapes, you can put all sorts of things on there, you know, not just bromeliads, everything, you can really create something fantastic for you and your friends, you know, it, it you know, the sky's the limit, it's up to you and it should be very, very much free, you know, somebody's always getting a piece of a rid of a piece of wood, a tree trunk or something like that, as long as it is durable, it must be durable, otherwise you're forever changing it when it rots out. Anyway, 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Till the next time, folks. Goodbye.